So let's talk about mutations. This is what the syllabus objectives say. There's several, so I'm going to put these up again at the end so you can go through and check that you have covered them all off. I'm also going to also put up the guidance, the syllabus guidance that goes with these syllabus objectives just to make sure that you understand what you don't need to know. All right, so what is a mutation? It's a small permanent change to the DNA. So we have mutations of genes and we have mutations of chromosomes. We're going to look at both of those separately. Uh, mutations of genes generally occur through DNA replication. There is processes that, that check and repair mutations. Uh, and a classic example of that is BRCA1, uh, BRCA1 and BRCA2, which are genes and gene products that, uh, well, genes that produce gene products that uh, check the, that the, um, the DNA is being replicated correctly. Uh, and mutations in the BRCA1, BRCA2 gene result in, uh, potentially result in an inability to be able to detect and repair mutations in DNA. And that can lead to cancer, particularly breast cancer. So the BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes you would have heard about probably in, the, um, in relation to breast cancer. Now, so when sometimes these, so sometimes these mutations remain undetected and mutations then uh, get passed on to the daughter cells. Now that doesn't necessarily mean offspring. It means when a cell replicates, we have two daughter cells. Remember, the DNA replication needs to occur first, and it's semi-conservative, and then we have our daughter cells, which then are going to continue to uh, go through DNA replication and cell division. So those mutations persist within the organism. And of course, if it does occur in the gametes or the sex cells, well, then it's going to be inherited by uh, the offspring. So we're going to talk more about that. Now, ultimately, these mutations, look, mutations happen all the time. Uh, and uh, as we said, most of them do get detected and repaired, but sometimes they do slip through. Given that much of the DNA in our genome doesn't actually code, or is non-coding DNA, frequently these mutations have no effect on the organism, but sometimes they do. Sometimes they have an ill effect Sometimes they actually provide an advantage to the organism and that is a mechanism we're going to talk about in Unit 4, Topic 2 with natural selection. But let's talk about mutations today and we're talking about mutations of genes and then mutations of chromosomes. In terms of gene mutations, we have somatic mutations or body cell mutations and these are the ones that uh, you know, affect body cells so they're not inherited well, they're not passed on to offspring. But germline mutations, these are the ones that occur during gametogenesis, and so they are mutations that exist in the sperm or the egg, and they then get passed on to the offspring, or potentially get passed on to the offspring. Now, in terms of gene mutations, we have two different types. We have point mutations, which affect a single nucleotide, and we have frame shift mutations, where when we have a, an insertion or a deletion of a nucleotide or, or several nucleotides, it actually changes the reading frame of the DNA sequence. I'm going to explain what we mean by that in more detail. So point mutations first of all. Now, the syllabus actually says you don't need to know silent, missense and nonsense. So you, I, I want to just talk you through them so you have an idea of how they might or might not have an impact on um, the expression of a gene. Um, so we're going to talk about these three scenarios. The first one's called silent. Basically we have a change in a base, so a single base is changed, but it actually codes for the same amino acid, so there's no effect on the protein. So if this is the DNA triplet, when it gets replicated you see we have this one point mutation instead of a C it becomes a T. Now, so this impacts the mRNA codon 
um, from AAG to AAA. But because of the redundancy in the codons, um, they both still code for lysine. So therefore, there's, it's a silent mutation, has absolutely no effect on the protein. The next one's a missense mutation. We have a change in the base, and that and it actually codes for a different amino acid. So it results in um, one of the amino acids in our sequence that might have a thousand poly, uh, peptides uh, or amino acids in a polypeptide chain. One of them gets changed. So it actually codes for a different amino acid. And so therefore it's got the potential to impact how the protein is folded and it may affect the function of the protein. It might not, but it might do. And then we have our nonsense mutations. We have a change in a base that codes, and so that now codes for a stop. So ultimately what happens is that the polypeptide chain is truncated. So the stop code actually tells the ribosome to stop translation. So here's an example of a single point mutation that has caused a missense uh, mutation. So one change in an amino acid and that results in normal red blood cells taking on a sickle cell shape and the issue with that is that they, they frequently get blocked in the blood, small blood vessels and also they have a reduced capacity to be able to carry haemoglobin. So that's sickle cell anemia and that's a big problem and it occurs from a single mutation. Right, so now we've got frame shift mutation. Remember that the DNA is in triplets. The, the last syllabus shown here was it, to be described uh, how inherited mutations is can transfer the variation to mRNA the genotype of in offspring. codons. And it's those codons. Okay, so how that can inherited mutations for the particular alter amino acids? The genotype okay, now, of offspring. So if we have an insertion. So if we have mutations in the gametes of one or both what parents, happens? so let's say for example this um, one this could occur if the parents it, have the disorder. It means that this or they're first a carrier. Triplet will now so be a, a carrier a, is somebody that um, and then the next one will be a copy CCG, of the, the mutation and then CT, gene, but it's not expressed in them. So we have a frame shift, um, or there's a mutation that occurs means that during the frame shift. So either the way, left, there's a mutation. If we had an insertion, in the of let's say one we actually both had an A, so a then and that mutation a. then is inherited. So that means by the that we would then have in the offspring A C is the next triplet. And, and the expression of the gene is the in the genome it may be affected. So in that case, so it's a uh, when we have an addition, that, and it's it just actually the other things that shifts we the know. frame to the right. So ultimately what that means is that all of the, the peptide chain after the mutation is going to be significantly different and, and might actually even result in the introduction of a stop codon. So here's a, um, just a, a brief summary of the difference between point mutations and frame shift. With a point mutation, you don't get a change in the reading frame because there's only a change in one codon and not an increase or decrease in the number of codons. And it's caused by a substitution or even maybe a change in the order of nucleotides, but not a change in the number. Whereas with frame shift, we get uh, the reading, shape, reading frame either shifts to the left or the right. Uh, we have a change in multiple codons and it's caused by insertion or deletion of nucleotides. Okay, so their gene mutation. Well, one of the things that can cause gene mutations are mutagens. These are physical or chemical agents that are actually capable of causing mutations in DNA. The physical mutagens are UV radiation, you know, causes skin cancer, ionizing radiation. So these are like your gamma rays and your alpha and beta radiation from radioactive source from radioactive decay and then also non-ionizing radiation which is really capturing the, the UV radiation there uh, and also heat high temperature now there's also chemical agents as well so you know I'm sure you, that you know that that some of the chemicals in cigarette smoke as well as you know other drugs and and other chemicals that are like pesticides and things um, can be mutagenic, so they can cause mutations in DNA. So how do they actually do that? Here's an example with ionizing radiation. It actually causes damage to the, um, the backbone 
of the DNA strands. The, the last syllabus objective was to be, describe how inherited mutations can alter the variations in the genotype of offspring. Okay, so how can inherited mutations alter the genotype of offspring? So if we have mutations in the gametes of one or both parents, um, this could occur if the parents have the disorder or they're a carrier. So a carrier is somebody that, um, that has a, a copy of the, the mutation gene, but it's not expressed in them. Um, or there's a mutation that occurs during gametogenesis. So either way, there's a mutation in the gamete of one or both parents. So then that mutation then is inherited by the offspring in the offspring's genome. Um, and the expression of the gene in the genome may be affected. So it's as simple as that, and it's just putting together the things that we already know. All right, so these are the syllabus objectives. So I want you to press pause and go through these and make sure we've covered them all, and make sure you're comfortable with them. And also here's the guidance. So it does say that you do not, you're not required to identify the effects of mutations in terms of silent, missense, and nonsense. We did that so you can just understand the impact of it. You need to recall um, the recall of specific chemical mutagens is not required, yet rather you need to have an understanding um, that a large number of chemical mutagens are carcinogenic and interact directly with DNA. Okay, so carcinogenic, that means that they can cause cancer. So many mutagens can cause cancer.